event so well. This reminds me of how spoiled I have become during the uh, pandemic. So I don't usually have to do all this and all this. I can usually just stumble across my room and do the Zoom presentation. Uh, I've also become spoiled in that I have to have notes. I didn't used to have notes. Now I've grown accustomed to notes. But let me say first of all that I'm very old. I can remember when viruses were things that you hoped your computer would not get, and not things that you hoped you would not get personally. But I do want to try to say as little about the pandemic as possible. But I want to start from, where's my slide on? I want to start from a phrase which has become very common, the new normal. And it's a phrase that I hate because as we're going to see, first of all, I think there is no normal anymore. And if there ever is a normal, it will definitely not be new. So let me start by reinforcing normal is gone. Normal is finished. So everything we thought about as normal will not come again. I think rapid, dramatic, continuous, stomach churning change is what we will see in the future. And there's several reasons for that. Uh, normal will be no more because we're going to be hit by a succession of exponential changes. And this diagram, which I always hope will be simpler than it turns out, sort of shows that. If you start with the blue dots on the left, we see changes that are already totally apparent. The internet, social media, mobile, cloud, big data, all that has happened to us all. And then we get to the green changes, which have happened to some of us, but not to all of us, but will happen to all of us very, very soon. And then we get to the yellow changes, which are in the future. Most of us will not have experienced them yet, but we can see them on the horizon. And the thing is that taken together, these changes will have a cumulative impact far greater than any one of the changes by themselves. And that is what the black stripe is supposed to show. That these changes will build into scenarios where we will be able to do things and we will be faced with challenges that we can never anticipate. Why are these changes so great? It's all rooted in exponential change. Almost everything to do with digital changes exponentially. It doubles every cycle. So computing power doesn't increase by 10% or 15% or 20%. It doubles. And it doubles about every year or two. The amount of data in the world doesn't increase by 10% or 15% or 20%. It doubles. And it's doubling about every 18 months. And these exponential changes very quickly get out of control. So if I look at 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, doubling each time, that's not very alarming. But after 30 cycles, I'm talking about 1 billion, 1,000 billion. And then the next cycle is 2 billion, 4 billion, 8 billion, 16 billion. And the changes very rapidly become almost unimaginable. And I have to remember myself that the first time I ever used a computer was almost exactly 50 years ago. And so the changes that have happened in that time are in the order of a billion time improvement. And so exponential technologies are going to hit us with continuous change. Some of you may have heard the story of the black swan. So until people started traveling to Australia, which of course is now impossible, uh, but when it was possible, uh, people believed that all swans were white. And if it wasn't white, it wasn't a swan. Then of course, Australia was explored and black swans emerged. And it shows how fragile I think our knowledge is in that just a small thing, one black swan can overturn a whole a whole uh, system of thought because we thought all swans were white. Now we have a black swan, 
they're not all right. And so one simple fact can overturn a lot of our experience. And the black swan has become synonymous with an unusual, unexpected event. And the point I'm trying to make here is that the black swan is no longer a black swan. So those unusual, unexpected events are going to become usual and expected and commonplace. And in fact, uh, some of you may be familiar with Doctor Who and the TARDIS, uh, which is an a, a, a object which is outside our dimensions. We should not confuse the unusual, the unfamiliar, with the improbable. We should start to expect the improbable. And that's what I mean by normal is no more. There is no more normal. But equally, I don't think the future will be totally new. I don't think we live in a Harry Potter world of the swirling wands and shapes shifting. We live in a world where the future is in fact rooted in the past. And the basis of our future will always be there in our present. The question is to spot it and to adapt to it. So the future is here now. We can see it. We need to adapt to it. Then I came across this phrase, may you live in interesting times. I think many of you know this phrase, uh, and it's supposedly uh, an ancient Chinese curse, followed by may you come to the attention of the authorities, may you find what you are seeking. Uh, now, the interesting thing here, of course, is that these are not ancient Chinese sayings at all. They probably originated in the 19th century uh, with this gentleman who just made them up. Uh, this is fake news. So nothing is really new. Fake news has been around for 100 years. Uh, but we do indeed live in interesting times. We live in times where changes are reinforcing each other. We are seeing once-in-a-lifetime events occurring on a regular basis. And many of those events are destroying our environment. Many of those events are destroying our way of life. And I think as we move into the future, we have to realize that business as usual is not an option. We have to change what we do. The world around us is changing incredibly rapidly, and we have to change ourselves. And I think if we're to survive, we need a massive transformation of business, of our environment, and of our social structures. And we have to put sustainability at the forefront. Otherwise, there will not be a world for your children and your children's children. At SASIM, we call this uh, sustainability through entrepreneurial innovation, looking for new ideas, new ways to do things. Our positioning now is Inspire, Connect, Transform for a better, smarter, sustainable world. Why Inspire? Because this is the age of creativity. We're all more or less playing with the same assets. We're playing with the same cards. And the winners will be the ones that can use those assets in the most creative, entrepreneurial way. So the first thing we need to do is to inspire. The driver of creativity is not ROI, it's inspiration. And so we need to foster that inspiration. We then need to connect together like-minded people because we know that when people work together, when they work as a team, when they work as a connected whole, then they can transform the world. And that transformation is going to be absolutely essential for our survival. We also set ourselves some goals of resilient, adaptive, impactful people. That's what we're trying to create. And I think that's what the world needs. That's what the employer of the year is trying to create. <clears throat> because if we don't create those resilient people, if we don't create people that can adapt and can have a positive impact on their society, then we will lose. Uh, and I think that's a very strong possibility. And of course, we still teach the uh, analytical skills, the communication skills. Uh, also in Australia, I came across this great sign, sharp sighted today, enter waters at your own risk. And I can think of no better signpost for the future. 
The future is full of sharks, and we will enter the water at our own risk. But enter the water we must, and we must make the most of the distinctive features of us as human beings. The humanity, the purposeful humanity, the ethics have never been more needed than in the past. As those transformational exponential changes mount up, and as computers within the next 20 years will have the same processing capabilities as your brain, then the distinctive features of humans will be in fact their humanity. And that is what I think we must cherish and we must be careful not to lose. So inspire, connect, transform for a better, smarter, sustainable world. Definitely dangerous waters, definitely sharks, definitely full of risk. But where there's risk, there's also opportunity. Opportunity to craft a better, smarter, sustainable world. And I think we're starting on that today. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the Welcome to our management, Sassin's Graduate Institute of Business and Administration of Tulalongkorn University for an interesting talk. 